And joining us now for more on Michael Cohen's testimony from Los Angeles is criminal defense attorney Lou Shapiro. Lou, thanks for taking the time to be with us today. I know we don't have cameras in the courtroom, so we're kind of going by, by the tweets and updates that we're getting. Uh, but, but what are you looking for? How do you gauge whether the prosecution's doing a good job with Michael Cohen as, as his testimony continues today? So the direct testimony, it comes as no surprise. Everyone knew that Cohen was going to say that the payment was made in order uh, to delay this new story from coming out before the election. And that is what the testimony at this point uh, is coming through. What's uh, interesting and what everyone's waiting to see is what will cross-examination show? Will Trump's lawyers be able uh, to decimate Cohen's credibility on the stand? How far will they be able to take the fact that he has been convicted of lying and use that in this trial? How will that affect the jurors, their faces, their expressions? How will the judge view that? And I think when it gets to cross-examination, there is going to be uh, some explosions, if you will, uh, in the courtroom on a lot of the testimony. And we know those types of questions are coming for Michael Cohen, that they are going to go at the credibility issues that he has. You're, you're a defense attorney. I mean, how specifically do you do that? What are the questions you're asking? Well, if you are uh, the cross-examiner representing Trump, uh, you're going to want to show motive. You're going to want to get Cohen angry on the stand. You're going to want to show his true colors. And if the jury sees that Cohen has an ax to grind with Trump because uh, Trump sort of left him out of uh, the club or the camp, uh, then that could uh, go very far. Because at the end of the day, there is no recording of Trump to Cohen saying, you need to delay this until after the election. This is going to ruin my election. This is going to make women hate me, and I'm going to lose their vote. That's not recorded. And there's a famous jury instruction that says that a confession or an admission that is unrecorded needs to be Treat it with scrutiny. Don't take it at face value. And we can bet when it comes time for closing argument that that's one of the main arguments that Trump's lawyers are going to argue. Where's the recording of this? Where's the proof of this actual conversation? He recorded other things, but this wasn't recorded. And this is the fifth week of this trial, including jury selection. And we've seen the prosecution try and tell this story from David Pecker through uh, Stormy Daniels' attorney, through Stormy Daniels, and then now Michael Cohen. But if things don't go well for Michael Cohen, what would that mean for the prosecution's chances of getting a conviction? Well, in fairness, the almost entirety of the case for the prosecution rests on Cohen. And if he doesn't come across as uh, credible, put together, someone that a case can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, then the prosecution's case will fall apart, and that should lead to a trouble. Uh, that should lead to an acquittal uh, for Trump. But again, it's early on in the day. They're coming back at 2 o'clock. Uh, there's a lot more to go in this case in terms of the cross-examination. We're still in the prosecution's direct case. So we will see what happens at the end of this. How long would you expect Michael Cohen to be on the stand? I expect this to be probably one more day, one to two more days at most. And... On the outside of the court, we've seen uh, some supporters of former President Trump, Senator J.D. Vance, Senator Tommy Tuberville there today, uh, a couple other members of Congress, members of the Republican Party. We know that Donald Trump is not a fan of this gag order. What do you make of what appears to be using surrogates to make the arguments for him to the media outside the courthouse? Well, it comes at no surprise. Uh, Trump is not the individual that likes to just keep quiet. Uh, and he has been rebuked and admonished and now fined several times for violating that court order. So this is, I suppose, the next best thing in Trump's camp is to present people surrogates that can try to make the case, try to make the points, because they can argue, well, there was no gag order on me. There's a gag order on Trump, but I have my freedom of speech. So I don't see how I can't say what I believe to be the case. And that might be somewhat effective. We'll see if the prosecution tries to make a case to the judge that this is also in violation of the gags order, that these people are just an extension of Trump and Trump is trying to circumvent the court's order and should be punished for that as well. All right, criminal defense attorney Lou Shapiro, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. You got it.